Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is a past episode taken from my podcast. I'm slowly moving my entire episode library to YouTube. Now just as a heads up, there's no editing on these. You may hear me out of breath, traffic going by, and occasionally me tripping. It's literally just me talking in my phone while I'm walking around my neighborhood at night like a crazy person. Hmm, wonder what the neighbors think of that. Anyway, the episode info can be found in the description. With all that said, enjoy the show. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe. What's going on, everybody? This is Tanner from TanManBaseballFan.com. Uh, it is just another beautiful night in Texas, and so happy that the weather has cooled off, and I'm just genuinely in a good mood because of this weather, and I'm not really ever outside all that much, <laughs> so I don't know why it matters too much, but love looking up at the sky and seeing the moon through the clouds and just great so uh, anyways wanted to kind of uh, lay out a few things here before I get started on this podcast number one the reason why I'm doing this uh, podcast and, the, and this medium the reason why I am kind of getting addicted to this medium is because I don't have to set up anything or really think through a whole lot of stuff um, as I'm on my walks at night Really, what I do is I think a lot about baseball, baseball cards, and that sort of thing. So I'm kind of just, um, I don't know, regurgitating my thoughts as I'm walking. So, you know, because I don't really have a whole lot of time to be doing something like this while I'm in my office or doing anything else because uh, I just got a lot of stuff going on. So um, I apologize, but this is going to be rough. It's going to be raw. Um, I have a lot of stuttering or ums, maybe some awkward silence. Maybe if I step on a frog, you might hear me scream like a little girl. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, anyways, just going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of whatever comes to mind. It might be five minutes, might be an hour. I'm not sure just yet. So you will be able to know because you'll see how long this podcast is. But anyway, so I wanted to start off by uh, talking about a fantastic fan freaking tastic game uh, that we had in the American League Championship Series last night. So, I uh, gotta say, a little nervous, a little nervous for the Astros because uh, game one didn't really go so well, didn't go the way they wanted it to. And game two, uh, as I was telling some people online, the Astros are going to New York uh, with their tail feathers on fire. <laughs> Because uh, we we're supposed to win both of these at home because Houston is just a monster at home. But uh, we just missed it. Uh, uh, you know, we just missed... Uh, uh, I don't really want to say we just missed it because we, uh, we got killed <laughs> the first game. And, uh, yeah, but last night was, was pretty epic. I would have loved for um, us to have just, like, destroyed the Yankees. But it didn't work out that way. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, it was a fantastic ending. And one of the things I love about these games is because uh, I really don't watch a whole lot of games start to end throughout the regular season. But um, during the postseason or if I am watching something, I'm parked on my couch and I'm on Facebook and Twitter and going back and forth with friends and, uh, and family about uh, the games. And uh, it's just really fun. It kind of adds a whole other dimension to watching the game. So uh, if you want to get in on that, by the way, uh, Twitter, uh, Tanman BB Fan. That's my uh, Twitter handle. Facebook, Tanner Jones. Look me up. I'd be happy to kind of have you jump in the conversation as well. Uh, wherever the game's going, it's fun. It's enjoyable. Uh, I don't really, I don't razz any Yankees fans or anything like that. I, uh, you know, that's not really how, how I roll. But when it comes to Yan uh, the Astros, I love uh you know, cheering them on and, and pumping them up and everything. So, uh, funny thing that happened last night <laughs> was is the bottom of the 11th, or is, is the middle of the 11th, actually. And I said, uh, I said on Facebook, I said, um, I don't remember what the exact wording is, but uh, I pred yeah, I predict uh, Carlos Correa hitting a game-winning home run. And by the way, if I'm wrong, I'll just delete this post. And so, I come out. <laughs> And sure enough, Korea hits a home run like uh, probably two minutes later and wins the game. So that was awesome. I loved it. It was a blast. But 
uh, it's fun just to be able to go back and forth with people. So, anyways, um, I know it's kind of a bummer for the Yankees fans. So nothing, nothing against y'all. You know, you've got a fantastic team, and uh, you know I'm very nervous about going into New York for three games. But anyway, so that's that. Um, that is actually not what I'm here to talk about uh, tonight. That was just kind of the kind of the warm up here. The title of this podcast is Rejection Breeds Obsession. And I'll explain that a little more here. What do I mean by rejection breeds obsession? Do you know anybody that is obsessed with getting a card that you probably couldn't care less about? And I think you do because if you know me and... uh, any other super collectors out there, uh, which I'm not a super collector anymore, but uh, if you know how I was, you know that I would go after these obscure cards that nobody else really would care about, uh, except for maybe five or ten other people. So what happens is a lot of times is uh, whenever uh, rejection breeds obsession, it can kind of manifest itself in several ways. So the first way, I'll, I'll kind of give you an example of... Let me think of a card that I was just really obsessed with picking up. <sighs> okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll try this one. There was a 1998 uh, Donner's Crusade green Jose Canseco uh, executive prototype. And uh, I remember catching wind of this card existing. I had no clue that it existed. And so for me... Let me, let me step back a second and talk about the uh, 98 Crusades. They are some of the most beautiful uh, baseball cards ever made, uh, certainly in the 90s. And so uh, if you don't know much about cards from the 90s, uh, for inserts and parallels, you all just like look it up, like look them up. I'm constantly sharing uh, pictures and little videos on Twitter um, because they're just like, they're beautiful. They're on another level of, uh, of gorgeousness. I mean, it's just amazing. So the 98 Crusades are like the, the top of the heap, so to speak, um, along with a few others. But for the Crusades, they came in uh, three flavors. So there's green uh, that were numbered to 250. There were purples that were numbered to 100. And then there were reds numbered to 25. So the reds were the ones that everybody, um, you know, was really dying over, and they just love those things to death. So, which is understandable because they're uh, very hard to find, especially because they're like over 20 years old at this point. And uh, yeah, which is kind of cool in and of itself uh, once you do find them. But the downside is they're wildly expensive. <laughs> so, uh, thing is, for me, for the looks. It looks purely, I loved the Conseco green so much more because the colors match. And, uh, but if there's not that, how do I say, that, uh, that elusive feel when there's 250 of them out there because they pop up every year, several times a year. So there's not like that whole super ultra rare thing going for them. So the reds, they fire in all, sim- all, all cylinders because, um, they're beautiful, they're rare, everybody wants them. So because of that, they'll uh, go super high in price. So what is an executive prototype? Let me tell you a little bit about that. The executive prototypes, if you look on the back, instead of saying they're like number 187 out of 250, it'll say XX out of 250. So as far as I know, the greens and the purples only have one or two copies. Uh, made of them and they're made specifically for executives in Donruss apparently and the reds uh, allegedly are one of ones uh, but it's one of those things you just don't really know (laughs) so basically uh, all being said they're about the same rarity from one to the other when they're executive prototypes so I uh, I caught wind of a green and a purple being held by a collector that I had never heard of before and Man, I was just super pumped about trying to get it. And so I, I wrote about this in my book, actually. Um, and I think that I actually, uh, I don't think I actually uh, finished the story on that because the story wasn't finished when I finished my book. But 
Um, anyways, I reached out to the seller, uh, or to the owner, rather, who was in the seller. Very nice guy. I just really enjoyed talking to him. Um, he had a lot of cards that I didn't have yet. So as a super collector back then, I wanted every single stinking piece of cardboard that I did not already have that was in his collection. <laughs> so I made some uh, just ungodly offers as far as, uh, um, you know, uh, as far as uh, getting getting all of them that I wanted to go. So it didn't really, didn't really work out. It seemed like we we're so close, <laughs> so close, like so many times. And uh, I was I was really bummed each time. It was like a um, it was like a letdown. It's like somebody told me uh, telling me Santa Claus wasn't real for the first time over and over and over again. <laughs> so uh, the funny thing is, and, and the number one card that I wanted out of all of them was that '98 Crusade Executive Prototype Green because to me that was the perfect card. It was better looking than the red, as uh, for Conseco because the colors match. Um, but it was also rarer than the red and nearly as rare as the red executive prototype, which we may never see ever. So, um, anyways, uh, that rejection kind of, uh, got me to be obsessed with that card a little bit. And so I started thinking, what can I do to get this? And interestingly enough, um, I was actually able to get it, uh, after I stopped super collecting. And uh, for those of you who don't know, after I sold out of everything, I decided to really kind of uh, pick up some Kinseiko cards I really love, but not like everything. So uh, the collection I have now is just like so much more meaningful to me. I just really love what I have. And so I looked at it that way and said, you know, I don't need these 50 cards that he has. Uh, that I that I didn't have anymore since I'm not a super collector anymore. I just want like a few of them. The green was one of them, so I made a, a fantastic trade offer uh, that was in his favor. And lo and behold, he actually did it. And I got to tell you all something. Like it's one thing to make a deal with somebody who wants to sell. It's quite another when the person has no intention of selling or trading whatsoever. But it worked out. I'm super happy. He was super happy. And that's one of my favorite cards in my collection. But let me tell you, um, the amount of obsession I had for that card <laughs> after I was rejected a few times went significantly up. Like it just skyrocketed. And so I think you could probably see that happening with a bunch of the uh, lower numbered cards that are hard to find. Um, Especially if you're very nonchalant about them when they pop up on eBay and you go, ah, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll go 40 bucks on this or something. And so you put a $40 bid and it sells for $41. And uh, so you're the loser. And uh, you start realizing, crap, I didn't see that card for three years. It might be four years until I see it again. It might be 200 bucks then or something. So you start getting obsessed with trying to find this card. And that happened to me several times. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, kind of frustrating, obviously. But taking a step back, I want to talk about this a little bit as well. Collecting, and just like everything else in life, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And so if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're, like, bummed that you missed out on something... Don't be bummed about it. Don't be upset at all. Be excited that you have another journey that you can go on and enjoy it. Because it's so fun. Like when I look at some of the cards I have in my collection, um, one of the fun things for me is remembering the story of how I got it. And almost every card that I have right now has a fun story. And uh, I got to say, I just uh, it adds like a whole other dimension to collecting. And it's fun to be able to tell others about it, like how you got it. And like that Green Crusade to me, if it just popped up on eBay and I hit buy it now, where's the story on that, right? <laughs> the, the story now is so much more fun how uh, I started to try to get it when I was uh, a super collector. I was rejected four or five times. I uh, developed a relationship with this person. I sold out everything, and eventually I was able to get the card that I wanted uh, in a time when it meant so much more to me. 
And, uh, and by the way, to tie up that end of that story, um, I l took a look back at the cards that he had that I wanted. I think they're actually like 52 of them or so. And I targeted him. I, I looked at him from a collector standpoint, not just a super collector standpoint. Since I wasn't super collecting anymore, I said, what cards do I really love? And so I targeted about eight of them. And interestingly enough, because uh, I was able to do one deal with him, it kind of was like a crack in the dam because I ended up doing a deal for all the eight other cards that I was like madly in love with that he had. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so funny, which is great because I'm so happy that it didn't happen when I, was, when I was a super collector because as a super collector, you pick up those cards that are rare and they just go in the box. I mean, I had over 5,000 cards, so it was hard to really enjoy what I had um, without, uh, um, it's kind of really hard for me to enjoy what I had, uh, like the super rare ones and the minor rare ones that were just like really pretty cards because they just got like lost in this ocean of cardboard that I had. And it was almost like a, a filing system, like a cataloging system. That's like, okay, I got this, check it off the list and in the box it goes. And now those suckers like stay on my desk and I play with them throughout the day and flick them in the light to, you know, catch the, the colors dance off the front of the card. And, um, I'm having so much more fun with it now. So, um, so it's kind of fun, but like all that, that story, it's just got a rich story behind that card and the others that I picked up, uh, that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So, um, you know, what I'm saying is be thankful and be glad and accepting of, rejection in this hobby because there will always be other rare cards even if you don't pick up the one that's like captured your heart there's so many others out there they're like really really cool so and plus what a great feeling it is to get a card that means so much more the second or third time that you missed it because it doesn't mean as much the first time and uh you know it's it's something i think as collectors we have a very difficult time uh understanding and thinking about the long game so we think like oh man i missed that card and you know it was like last january and you dwell on it and everything but guess what next january is coming february is coming <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna happen at some point most likely um and if it's not like i said there's plenty of other insane cards so enjoy the ride this isn't a hobby that uh that requires stress you know it's a hobby that is meant to be something that we can uh, relax in and to enjoy and, uh, and it's fun that way. So um, one other thing I wanted to um, switch tracks a little bit is uh, when it comes to the term rejection breeds obsession is the male. <laughs> I don't know if you've had this before, I'm actually going through part of this right now, um, but you have a card that comes in like you land it and you're like, okay, that's a cool card, I'm happy I got it. And then, I know for a fact this has happened to like each and every one of you. You're checking the tracking on USPS, right? And something happens. It says delayed or doesn't get here on the, <laughs> on the day that it says it will. And you start freaking out a little bit, right? Well, if the days keep coming, it's like day two, day three, day four, and you still don't have it, you start getting anxious. And not only do you start getting anxious, you start dreaming about that card you're missing <laughs> if, it's, if it's good enough. So what do you do? You know, you start, uh, you really start internalizing that. And it's almost like if you lose a card in the mail, or at least you think you might lose a card in the mail, you start becoming a little obsessed with it. And you start thinking, man... Life would be so much better if that just came in just fine. <laughs> That's happened to me several times before also, just like kind of sweating a, a big purchase or a big trade or something. And uh, thankfully we haven't had much loss in the mail, but unfortunately it has happened. And uh, I do remember one time last November, I did a trade with uh, another super collector uh, named Andrew. So Andrew, if you're out there uh, listening, howdy to you. Um, but 
uh, we shipped out the cards to each other and he got his fine and mine didn't make it like USPS lost it, it wasn't Andrew's fault USPS lost it and I was going back and forth with them for months but uh, anyway so guess what I uh, guess what card I really really would like to get my hands on uh, at some point is the one that I lost and uh, you know so it's kind of kind of frustrating but when you take a step back and you realize that card wouldn't have meant as much had uh, I just got it in the mail you know as opposed to whenever I find it again like maybe if it's like a month from now or a year from now it'd be kind of a so much of a cooler story that, that it actually came in so uh, anyways I think a lot of it is mindset though because uh, for all of those you know tens of twenties of hundreds of cards that have come in that possibly had a problem with USPS um, and you look at them and you go oh no they're not coming in what's going on and they actually do make it you know mark in your head how you feel about that how you feel about the card and how the desire of that specific card went up significantly in your brain because you thought you might not get it and guys i'm making a bunch of wild assumptions here <laughs> who knows maybe i'm the only one that's weird enough to think like this <laughs> yeah i don't know I don't think so. I think there's a lot of you out there that can, that are really tracking with this. So, um, that's kind of where my brain has been tonight, um, on my walk. And, uh, like I said, I hope this is clicking with you. Um, I don't think I really have a whole lot else to say. Um, I think I've said really kind of most of what I wanted to. So, uh, yeah, I do appreciate you listening and, um, you know, kind of coming along on this, uh, nighttime walk with me. It's fun. Um, it's enjoyable. And so I hope that you can give me some feedback, good feedback, hopefully <laughs> on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or anywhere. I'm, uh, like I said, on Twitter, I'm at Tanman BB fan. You get me email Tanman baseball fan at gmail.com. My website is Tanman baseball fan.com. Facebook. You can find me at Tanner Jones. Uh, YouTube, by the way, is a uh, tan man baseball fan. So youtube.com slash tan man baseball fan. And, uh, also on basically any and all of the big forums, you can find me, uh, as the, with the username of Mushi. So yeah, I mean, I am, uh, I'm very accessible. So I would love to hear from you. Uh, please, please, please like subscribe, share this podcast. I would appreciate it. And, uh, by the way, I haven't given my book a blug on this podcast yet. So, uh, I'm running a sale on my book, Confessions of a Baseball Card Addict on Amazon, uh, for $9.95. And if you have Prime, the shipping's free. So, I hope you check that out as well. Uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks.